Adrienne Barbeau is an enigmatic figure in the entertainment world, whose career spans over six decades, marked by versatility and resilience. Best known for her iconic roles in horror films, <gasps> breakout performance in the sitcom, Maud. Barbeau's journey to stardom is filled with unexpected twists and fascinating anecdotes. Join us as we delve into the lesser-known aspects of Adrienne Barbeau's life and career, revealing the strange and captivating tales that have shaped her legacy. Early Life and Career Adrienne Barbeau was born on June 11, 1945, in Sacramento, California. Despite not coming from a show business family, she had an innate desire to entertain from a young age. She attended Del Mar High School in San Jose, California, where her interest in performing arts began to take root. After graduating, Barbeau decided to pursue her passion seriously and relocated to New York City in the late 1960s. This move marked the beginning of her colorful and diverse career in show business. Upon arriving in New York, she quickly found herself working as a go-go dancer at some of the city's most notorious nightclubs. In her autobiography, she later recounted this period, describing it as working for the mob. Despite the less than glamorous start, these experiences helped her develop a strong stage presence and resilience. Determined to break into legitimate theater, Barbeau auditioned for Broadway roles and eventually made her debut as a member of the chorus in the classic musical Fiddler on the Roof. Her talent did not go unnoticed, and she was soon promoted to the role of Hodel, one of Tevye's daughters. This role was a significant step up and increased her popularity within theater circles. Her performance opened doors to numerous other opportunities in plays and musicals, allowing her to hone her craft further. Barbeau's burgeoning theater career saw her involved in over 20 productions, where she built a reputation as a dedicated and talented actress. Her time on stage also included a brief stint with the San Jose Civic Light Opera, an experience that took her on a tour of Southeast Asia. During this tour, she performed for American troops stationed in the region, a role she found particularly fulfilling. This period of her life solidified her decision to dedicate herself to entertaining others, as she realized the profound impact her performances could have. Despite her success in theater, Barbo understood that to reach a broader audience and achieve greater fame, she needed to transition to film and television. This move was not without its challenges. The entertainment industry, especially in film and TV, was notoriously competitive and often superficial, with producers frequently more interested in an actress's looks than her acting ability. Barbo's striking beauty sometimes led to typecasting and objectification, but she remained determined to prove her talent and versatility. In the early 1970s, as she started to make this transition, Barbeau faced both opportunities and obstacles. Her breakthrough came when she was cast as Carol Trainer in the sitcom Maud, which debuted in 1972. Playing the role of the divorced daughter of B. Arthur's titular character, Barbeau quickly became a household name. Despite the focus on her physical appearance, she used the role to showcase her acting skills earning critical acclaim and solidifying her status in the industry. Throughout this period, Barbeau also appeared in several television movies, such as The Great Houdini, which further showcased her range and talent. These roles helped her build a diverse portfolio and demonstrated her ability to tackle various genres and characters. Transition to TV and Film Adrienne Barbeau's transition from stage to screen marked a significant evolution in her career showcasing her versatility and determination to break out of the confines of theater. After establishing herself as a talented stage actress with notable roles, including her acclaimed performance as Hodel in Fiddler on the Roof, Barbeau set her sights on television and film to reach a broader audience. Her television debut came in 1972 with the role of Carol Trainer in the groundbreaking sitcom Maud. Cast as the divorced daughter of the titular character, played by B. Arthur, Barbeau's portrayal of Carol quickly captured the audience's attention. The show was part of the Norman Lear universe, known for tackling social issues with humor and candor. Maude was no exception, and Barbeau's character often found herself at the center of these discussions, providing a platform for Barbeau to display her acting prowess. Despite the show's success, 
Barbeau faced challenges common for many actresses of her era. She felt that her physical appearance was often the focus, overshadowing her talent. In her autobiography, she recalled how her physical attributes seemed to precede her performances, with audiences and producers alike sometimes more interested in her looks than her acting skills. This frustration led her to seek roles that would allow her to prove her capabilities as a serious actress. While Maude was a significant step in her career, Barbeau continued to pursue opportunities in television movies to further diversify her portfolio. Her first major TV movie role was as Daisy White in The Great Houdini, a biopic about the famous magician Harry Houdini. This role was well received and demonstrated her ability to tackle more dramatic parts. She followed this with roles in TV movies such as Crash, Someone's Watching Me, and The Darker Side of Terror, each performance adding to her growing reputation as a versatile actress. The transition to film began with her debut in John Carpenter's 1980 horror classic, The Fog, where she played the lead role of Stevie Wayne, a radio DJ who becomes entangled in a supernatural mystery. Directed by her then-husband Carpenter, the film was a success and solidified Barbeau's status in the horror genre. This role not only showcased her acting skills, but also opened doors to more film opportunities. Barbeau's film career continued to flourish with roles in Carpenter's Escape from New York, where she played Maggie, one of the earliest examples of a female action hero in a dystopian setting. She then starred in Swamp Thing, directed by Wes Craven, further cementing her place as a scream queen. Her role in Creepshow, a horror anthology directed by George A. Romero and written by Stephen King, added to her genre credentials. Throughout the 1980s and beyond, Barbeau balanced her film career with ongoing television work. Notable TV roles included appearances on shows like Fantasy Island, Murder, she wrote, and voice work as Catwoman in Batman the Animated Series. These roles highlighted her adaptability and enduring appeal in both mediums. Film Career Adrienne Barbeau's film career began with a splash and solidified her status as a versatile and talented actress. Her debut on the big screen came in 1980 with the release of The Fog, a horror film directed by her then-husband, John Carpenter. In this film, Barbeau played Stevie Wayne, a radio DJ who becomes ensnared in a ghostly tale of vengeance. The role was specifically written for her, showcasing her ability to carry a film and setting the stage for her future in the horror genre. The Fog was a commercial success, grossing over $20 million in the United States and marking Barbeau as a rising star in Hollywood. Following the success of The Fog, Barbeau continued her collaboration with Carpenter in Escape from New York, 1981. In this cult classic, she portrayed Maggie, a tough and resourceful prisoner who assists in rescuing the president. Her performance as one of the earliest female action heroes demonstrated her range and helped cement her reputation in the industry. This role was a departure from her earlier work and showcased her ability to adapt to different genres and character types. Barbeau's foray into the horror genre continued with her role in Wes Craven's Swamp Thing, 1982. In this adaptation of the DC Comics character, she played Alice Cable a government agent who becomes embroiled in a battle between the monstrous Swamp Thing and the villainous Dr. Arcane. The film further solidified her status as a scream queen and highlighted her talent for portraying strong, resilient characters in fantastical settings. In the same year, Barbeau starred in George A. Romero's Creepshow, an anthology film based on stories by Stephen King. She appeared in the segment titled The Crate, playing Wilma Northrup, a domineering wife who meets a gruesome fate. This role allowed Barbeau to display her comedic timing and horror chops, contributing to the film's success and enduring popularity. Barbeau also ventured into comedy, with memorable roles in films like Cannonball Run, 1981, and Back to School, 1986. In Cannonball Run, she joined an ensemble cast led by Burt Reynolds in a cross-country car race. In Back to School, she played Vanessa, the wife of Rodney Dangerfield's character, adding to her diverse filmography. Throughout the 2000s, Barbeau continued to appear in a variety of films, ranging from dramas to thrillers and independent productions. Notable films included Argo, 2012, where she had a small but impactful role, and Reach For Me, 2008, 
which showcased her ability to handle emotionally complex characters. Her enduring appeal and versatility kept her busy in the industry, even as she explored new avenues such as voice acting. Barbeau's recent work in the 2020s demonstrates that she remains a formidable presence in the film industry. She starred in The Eagle and the Albatross, 2020, and For the Love of Jesse, 2020, proving that her talent and charisma are as strong as ever. Additionally, her role in the independent horror film Hellblazers 2022 and her upcoming lead role in The Pitchfork highlight her enduring connection to the horror genre. Voice acting and later work. Adrienne Barbeau's career extended beyond traditional acting into the realm of voice acting, where her distinctive voice and strong presence found a new medium. Her first notable voice acting role came uncredited in 1982 as the computer in John Carpenter's thriller The Thing. This marked the beginning of a prolific voice acting career that would span decades. One of her most iconic voice roles was Catwoman Selina Kyle in Batman the Animated Series, which aired from 1992 to 1995. Barbeau's sultry and confident portrayal of the feline anti-heroine won her acclaim and solidified her as a beloved figure among Batman fans. She reprised this role in The New Batman Adventures and Gotham Girls, bringing depth and nuance to Catwoman across different series. Barbeau's talent for voice acting extended to various other animated series and video games. In the late 1980s, she voiced characters in The Real Ghostbusters, showcasing her versatility in handling different genres and character types. Her work in video games is equally notable, including roles in Descent 3, Batman, Arkham Asylum, God of War 3, Mad Max, and Fallout 76. These roles allowed her to connect with a younger audience and stay relevant in the rapidly evolving entertainment industry. In addition to voice acting, Barbo continued to appear in television and film roles throughout the 2000s and 2010s. She played Ruthie in the critically acclaimed HBO series Carnival from 2003 to 2005. Her portrayal of the snake charmer in a Depression-era carnival was both haunting and compelling, adding another layer to her already diverse acting portfolio. Barbeau also had a recurring role on the soap opera General Hospital, playing Suzanne Stanwyck from 2010 to 2011. This role demonstrated her ability to adapt to different formats and genres, from primetime dramas to daytime soaps. Her performance was well received, adding another dimension to her illustrious career. In recent years, Barbeau has continued to be active in the industry. In 2021, she appeared in the Netflix series Cowboy Bebop in the episode Callisto Soul and in FX's American Horror Stories in the episode Drive-In. These roles underscore her enduring appeal and ability to captivate audiences across different platforms and genres. Barbeau's later work also includes notable film roles. In 2020, she starred in The Eagle and the Albatross, a comedy drama that showcased her ability to handle complex, emotionally rich characters. She also played a lead role in For the Love of Jesse, further demonstrating her versatility and commitment to her craft. Her continued presence in horror films is evident with her role in the independent movie Hellblazers, 2022, and her upcoming lead role in The Pitchfork, showing her enduring connection to the genre that helped define her career. Personal life. Adrienne Barbeau's personal life has been as dynamic and intriguing as her career in the entertainment industry. Born on June 11, 1945, in Sacramento, California, Barbeau's early life set the stage for a career that would span over six decades. Despite not coming from a show business family, she displayed an innate desire to entertain from a young age, a passion that would later propel her to stardom. Barbeau's personal life is marked by two significant marriages. Her first marriage was to famed director John Carpenter. The couple met on the set of Carpenter's television movie, Someone's Watching Me, in 1978. Their relationship quickly blossomed, and they married in 1979. Carpenter, known for his work in the horror genre, cast Barbeau in several of his films, including The Fog and Escape from New York. The couple had one son, John Cody Carpenter, born in 1984. Despite their professional and personal collaboration, the couple divorced in the same year their son was born. Barbeau has often spoken fondly of her time with Carpenter, noting their creative synergy and mutual respect. In 1992, Barbeau married Billy Van Zant, 
an actor, playwright, and producer. Van Zant, the half-brother of musician and actor Stephen Van Zant, was 12 years younger than Barbeau. The couple met in 1991 when Barbeau was cast in Van Zant's play Dropped Dead. Their relationship was fruitful both personally and professionally. They welcomed twin sons, Walker Stephen and William Dalton Van Zant, in March 1997, when Barbeau was 51. She often joked about being the only woman in the maternity ward who was also a member of AARP. Despite the couple's eventual divorce in 2018, Barbo has always spoken positively about her time with Van Zandt and the joys of raising their children together. She has often highlighted the balance between her demanding career and her role as a mother, emphasizing the importance of family in her life. In addition to her marriages and motherhood, Barbo's personal life includes her advocacy for women's rights and her experiences with the challenges of being a woman in Hollywood. She has openly discussed the harassment she faced in the industry and her efforts to be recognized for her talent rather than her physical appearance. Her autobiography, There Are Worse Things I Could Do, published in 2006, offers an unflinching look at her life and career, providing insights into the struggles and triumphs she encountered along the way. Legacy. Adrienne Barbeau's legacy in the entertainment industry is marked by her versatility, talent, and resilience. Emerging from humble beginnings, she transformed herself from a go-go dancer in New York City's nightclubs into a celebrated actress known for her work on stage, television, and film. Barbeau first captured public attention with her role as Carol Trainer in the iconic sitcom Maud. Her portrayal of the independent, outspoken daughter of B. Arthur's character resonated with audiences and established her as a significant television talent. Despite feeling that her physical appearance often overshadowed her acting abilities, Barbeau's performance on Maud remains a testament to her skill and presence. Her transition to the big screen in the 1980s solidified her status as a scream queen and a horror genre icon. Collaborating with then-husband John Carpenter, she starred in cult classics such as The Fog and Escape from New York. These roles not only showcased her talent, but also helped redefine the portrayal of women in horror and action films. Barbeau's ability to embody strong, resilient characters made her a standout in a genre often dominated by male leads. Beyond horror, Barbeau demonstrated her range with roles in comedies like Cannibal Women in the Avocado Jungle of Death and Back to School. Her work in these films highlighted her comedic timing and ability to handle diverse genres. Barbeau's impact extends to voice acting, where her distinctive voice brought characters like Catwoman in Batman, the animated series, to life. Her contributions to video games, including God of War 3 and Fallout 76, further underscore her versatility and enduring appeal. Her autobiography, There Are Worse Things I Could Do, offers an intimate look at her career and personal experiences, providing fans and aspiring actors with a deeper understanding of her journey. Conclusion In conclusion, Adrienne Barbeau's journey from her early days as a go-go dancer to becoming a revered actress and voice talent has been nothing short of remarkable. Her career, spanning over six decades, is a testament to her versatility, resilience, and enduring passion for entertainment. Barbeau's impact on the entertainment industry is multifaceted. As a television actress, she charmed audiences with her memorable roles in iconic shows like Maud showcasing her ability to bring depth and authenticity to her characters. Her transition to film saw her become a defining figure in the horror genre, earning her the title of Scream Queen and cementing her status as a cultural icon. Beyond her on-screen work, Barbeau's contributions to voice acting added another dimension to her legacy. Her distinctive voice brought beloved characters to life and captivated audiences in animated series and video games alike. Throughout her career, Barbeau faced challenges and setbacks, from industry pressures to personal struggles. Yet, she navigated these obstacles with grace and determination, never losing sight of her passion for performing. Her candid memoir offers a glimpse into the highs and lows of her journey, inspiring fans and aspiring actors alike. As she continues to work in both film and television, Barbeau remains a beloved figure in the entertainment world, cherished for her talent, charisma, and enduring appeal. Her legacy serves as a reminder of the transformative power of storytelling 
and the lasting impact of those who dedicate their lives to the craft. In entertainment history, Adrian Barbeau's name will forever shine as a beacon of creativity, talent, and resilience. Her contributions have left an indelible mark on the industry, inspiring generations of performers to follow in her footsteps. As we celebrate her achievements, we honor not only her remarkable career, but also the spirit of perseverance and passion that defines her legacy. Thanks for watching another episode. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.